the medical profession and all that. Where does law enforcement come in in this? Well, good morning. First of all, I'd like to commend the governor for organizing this task force. I think from the law enforcement perspective, it's a tool that's long overdue. Thank you, Governor, for your leadership. I think from the law enforcement perspective, the folks that I've talked to, colleagues and associates in law enforcement, they've seen this epidemic grow from a problem to an epidemic over the last five or so years, especially in the southern region of Ohio. I think they've also seen, I think it was mentioned earlier, budget cuts, the economy being what it is, their resources have been strained as well. I think this is an opportunity for them to have a voice at the table, and I think Dr. Jackson and I are talking about this issue. There are a number of folks that have been working on this issue in pockets all over the place. I mean, with health, with the law enforcement, it's an opportunity for us to bring these folks together, such as a clearinghouse, and look at these recommendations, identify the recommendations, both from law enforcement and the health perspective, that we can share with the governor to immediately put some things in place in the next few weeks to start to address the issue. Governor, what's the, would you say a little more about the source of this $250,000? Is that federal Justice Department money, or what is it? I think George can speak to that because he's the one that's making the investment. Thank you. Yes, this is a JAG grant, a Justice Administration grant, through the CJIS, who is housed in the Department of Public Safety. We often use JAG grants. As a matter of fact, the Attorney General spoke of the task forces, the drug task forces around the state. And through the Criminal Justice Office in the Department of Public Safety, we assist in funding those task forces. And quite frankly, we've located some money there that we can put towards this problem. I think another area that we're going to look at is the task forces. I'm reading the Commander's Task Force reports over the last couple months. Nearly every task force, there's 24, 27 in the state, nearly every task force is dealing with this issue across the state of Ohio. Predominantly in the southern region of Ohio, but each task force has dealt with this problem. And so we're looking at ways that we can also maybe help these task forces, make it a priority for them to address this issue. And so we're, you know, these are the things that we're going to bring to the table as part of this task force. And we're very optimistic that we're going to be able to put some things in place very quickly to address this issue. You keep mentioning that southern Ohio is where a lot of these problems are, and Governor, you mentioned Senator County. What is it about southern Ohio as opposed to, you know, the urban areas or some other part of the state? I mean, I know the problem exists in those areas, but what is it about southern Ohio that you think has really been the center of this? Well, you know, we talked about the database and the technical ways that we may be able to track some of these activities. But the fact is that in rural areas, it's much less likely that some of these technologies may be utilized. That may be one factor. I think the fact that, you know, that there is the ability to gain some level of perhaps anonymity. Some of these so-called pain clinics are located in fairly isolated areas or, you know, areas where there's not a lot of population. I think the economic circumstances can be a factor there as well. Southern Ohio is sort of a tri-state area. Kentucky, West Virginia, and Ohio merge, and I think there is the ability perhaps, at least this has happened in the past, where prescriptions would be written in one state and filled at a pharmacy in another state. I've just asked Dr. Jackson if he would say a word to you about the, you know, the national scope of this problem and how this is a problem for Ohio, but it's a national problem as well. Thank you, Governor. The challenge of substance abuse poisoning is truly a national problem, and the solution is going to be a national one as well as a statewide and local one. When you look at many of the states that border Ohio, there is a very serious problem there as well. If you look at all of the Appalachian states, there are huge problems there as well, and there are many challenges in some of the western states as well. 
There are other states that have many more pain clinics than we do in Ohio. So we are looking at this um, from a national perspective as well as a statewide perspective because we think that the solution will lie in addressing both of those issues as well. Governor, do you have, do you have any idea how many of these pain clinics there are? Are they, are they licensed by the state? Are there state laws or rules that control how they operate? Well, I'm, 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 I'm told that there are nine, I believe there are nine pain clinics in, in my home county. Uh, and um, I don't know how many there may be you know, spread around the entire, yeah, their entire region. Uh, they are not currently licensed. Uh, that's one of the things that I think the legislature <clears throat> and the task force um, is likely to, to consider. Um, there are, I believe, at least uh, two other states that have uh, ha have approached this problem through requiring a licensure of, of, uh, of uh, freestanding pain clinics. Um, but my experience with uh, some of these field members has been that uh, oftentimes the doctors are from outside the region. Um, uh, they have no affiliation with local hospitals. Um, so it's, it's uh, and they move around um, from one community to another community as, uh, you know, as uh, uh, the heat may build up on them or they may become more of a, uh, uh, considered, uh, you know, a nuisance by the, by the community in which they exist that they, uh, they pick up and move. When you say, you know,